right, good morning. Welcome to the first vlog of 2024. I remember when 2020 sounded super futuristic and here we are. My lens looks dusty. So my last vlog before my little break was a hair makeover part one. This vlog is also gonna be a hair makeover part two. Okay, it's actually not, but you'll see what happens later in the vlog. But the goal of that part of the hair makeover was to remove the black dye. I wanted like a cool tone brown. It looks black. I mean, it looks different in every light right now. It's definitely not black anymore. In this lighting, I feel like it kind of looks black. And it's been about four weeks. Today, I am doing hair makeover part two here. This is kind of what I'm going for now. It's kind of changed. <laughs> I think I want it lighter than I initially wanted it. I don't want any red, but with dark roots so that I can like touch it up myself as it grows out. And also I'm down to like experiment with toner and stuff myself, but the main goal today is to bleach it to get it light enough. Love this guy. This is five bucks. I haven't done a full face of makeup in what feels like forever. My roots are so gray right now because I've been waiting for this appointment. So headband it is, and then I'm gonna beanie it up. So that hair appointment is at three o'clock. It's almost nine o'clock right now. I have a thing for Instagram I need to film before that and edit and send off, which is why I am getting ready right now. Feels weird, but not weird to be vlogging again. I don't know, it, it, <laughs> to me it doesn't feel like I had that much of a break because uh, there was some, uh, a situation arose, which I might talk about in a shadow and schmooze, but Basically, from the time that I said I was taking time off from YouTube, one of my side projects kind of blew up. So I was dealing with that the entire time I was off YouTube. I was yeah, still working, still kind of stressed dealing with that, but I had a couple days in between Christmas and New Year's that were really relaxing. I got a lot of reading in. I was in North Carolina and then came here and was here for New Year's. So it was still nice. I had like, you know, a good few days where I felt like it was relaxing but it feels weird to be filming again because i'm kind of like wait wasn't i just doing this <laughs> i hope you guys had a good holiday break hopefully you got some time off my new year's was very casual it just went to like a bonfire kind of thing and then saw some people that were in town so last night i went to a ceramics class a pottery making class for the first time it's harder than it looks my nails were getting in the way a little bit so if you're gonna do it cut your nails don't get I have acrylics on right now. It was really fun. It was like a good group of people. This is the Rare Beauty pencil. I've been really liking it. I instacarted groceries when I got in. I got here a couple days ago, but I do need to go to Target at some point. Not sure if that's gonna be in this vlog, but I have a whole list of things I wanna get. I like going to Target though, either super late at night or first thing in the morning. Let me know what kind of Target gal or guy you are. I can't find literally anything. I'm gonna go with the ColourPop bronzer in Isla Bet. This is a little bit dry. It's getting like dry on me. I wouldn't particularly recommend. I am working on my yearly favorites video, deciding if I wanna do a separate lifestyle favorites video or just do beauty. I did a little bit of video planning the other day for the new year. This is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes Palette. I think I'm gonna go with some of the warmer tone browns. I still have the mirror thing on here. Desperately need to wash makeup brushes. Okay, I'm gonna finish doing my makeup and I'll be back. Makeup is done. I used one of my favorite lip combos and these two combined are like, I wanna say probably $8 or under $10 combined. The NYX lip liner in Sand Beige. Holy Grail status at this point. And then AOA Full Lips Pumping Lip Gloss in the shade Light Pink. I haven't eaten breakfast or anything yet, but I'm about to take my vitamins. And I wanted to thank Rachel for supporting my channel and sponsoring a portion of today's video. One of the best things I think about Ritual is that you can take them on an empty stomach. So whenever you think about it, whenever throughout the day, you can take them. It doesn't have to be with food because there's a delayed release capsule. Love that. But the two I take are the Ritual Essential for Women Multivitamin 18 and Up and the Ritual Symbiotic Plus. This is a prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic all in one. The Symbiotic Plus helps with gut support, digestive support, gut lining, and immune support. I am almost out of this jar. Need to refill. Whoops. They are shelf stable, so they don't have to be refrigerated and they smell like mint. They just go down super easy because they're coated vegan. The ingredients are traceable, so you can go on their website, see where the ingredients are sourced from. Ritual ships to the US, Canada, and the UK. They gave me such a good code for you guys. You can use the code TaylorW40 to get 40% off your purchase. For example, if you got the Symbiotic Plus, it's usually $54, but right now it's only $32 with my code. Good time for the new year if you wanna start off with some healthy habits. 
and it's 40% off everything. So you can check out the website, see what would be a good fit for you or your family, but I'll have virtual link down below. Okay, so this is probably one of the last few times I am doing this. About to unpack everything. There's a nice closet in this one. And then I have this little thing over here where I can put like shoes and I might put some camera gear and stuff in there. There's a full length mirror in there. We love that. The bathroom. So there's some nice deep drawers in here too where I'll probably put like makeup and stuff. I haven't even looked in here. Ready brush, pre-pasted toothbrush. Never seen that in my life. Just found my tripod. So I can now attach this to the camera I'm using right now. This tripod, if you need like a heavy duty one, like the camera I, I'm filming on right now is pretty big and like bulky. And this guy holds, holds it up and it extends. I can't really do it with one hand, but it extends out and then you just spread the legs. It's a heavier tripod, but if you have a heavy camera that you don't want the lens like tilting down, this is good. I think I'm actually gonna just keep my makeup station, if you will, at the dining room table because there's a couch and stuff that I could work out over there. There's a desk in the other room and the bed. So I don't know, I'd feel like I won't be doing a whole lot of working or eating at this table. And if I want to, I can just push it over. And I have like the natural light from the windows coming in when I do my makeup. So that's what's happening here. Set up my perfumes on this little shelf and put my hair stuff down here and self tanners. I have a hair tool thing I wanna try in there. Body cream over here, deodorant that I'm trying. And then this is a, this is cool. I'm gonna put this on this mirror. It's removable, but you can like stick it on the mirror and then, you know, film your things, but it comes right off. Have never dry brushed before, but I've heard good things just for like circulation. And I think inflammation, it helps too because of circulation. I gotta look more into it, but. I've been trying this cleansing balm. I don't not like it. I just feel like it doesn't remove eye makeup nearly as well as my go-to one, which I'll link down below. If I can't see something, I just forget to use it, which is why I want to just have stuff out instead of like putting a lot of stuff in the drawers. The second day in a row I've done this. <laughs> Tell me how it still happened with the plate on it. I have a, like an hour, so I changed into comfy clothes because I've been wanting to do this for forever, but I've been waiting to vlog again so I could do it with you guys. <laughs> I wanna change my Kindle case cover. I wanna try this like clear one with a handle and then I have decals that I'm gonna put on the back. The only thing is that I do not have double stick, double sided tape, which is what I was gonna use. Oh my God, it feels so tiny without the case on it. I love the way the Oasis feels. The Oasis has this like back beveled thing so you can like grip it nice and then it has the buttons on the front. This isn't what I'm reading, this is just an ad. I do have a cover on it right now so it doesn't like scratch the screen. This is the current beverage. So I'll have the case link down below. It is available for different Kindles, like different models. The point of having the clear one is so then you can put the decals. You can go to Michael's and get, you know, like a colored paper and then put the decals in or do like a sparkly paper. And then I got these decals off Amazon. There's a bunch of different styles of decals on there, depending on like what colors you want. And obviously I just wanted <laughs> black and white. So I'm gonna lay these out and see what we're working with here. And then also I ordered a ring from this company and they gave me little stickers. So I think there might be a couple I wanna put on from here as well. Oh, these are so pretty. Because I don't have tape, I'm thinking I'm just going to have to lay down, like basically go like this, lay them down how I want and then just plop the Kindle in and hope that works and stays. These are my favorites. So now I'm gonna narrow it down because all these aren't gonna fit. I don't want it that cluttered. How freaking cute is this taco? Obviously I gotta have tacos. Okay, these are the definites. Taco, camera, or that alternate. Don't know if I need both. Like that one, maybe. I like the shape of this one. And I like the app a lot. Obviously books, cause Kindle. Okay, I didn't do a very good job of eliminating. Oh, that's gonna be covering that whole line, so I probably can't fit that many because this thing is gonna be covering it. Kind of like that. Let's see how that looks. I'm a 
obsessed. I actually love that. And this is so easy to hold with the hand strap thing because you can still grip right here, but it's not like sliding out. And now it has the wrap around on the front too. There are a ton of stickers left and like cute ones. So I might put these, you could put them on like your laptop, do the same thing or give them to a friend, split the pack. This would be cute to save and use on like thank you cards and stuff. Like just stick a cute decal in. If you're not into black and white, there's like tons of different Amazon packs you can get. There's pink packs and you know, different themes and stuff. I like how we just have a llama chilling on the wall, but just filmed what I needed to for Instagram, but I wanted to show you guys these sweatpants. They're Ritzia. I was working with them over on Instagram, which was by the way, very exciting because I love Ritzia. A lot of the time sweatpants, even if they're like cinched on the bottom, which these are, if you're short or tall, it's annoying because you can't get the right length. These ones come in all lengths, short, tall, regular, and they look good in the butt and they're like, they just fit really nice and cozy where they're still baggy, but they're a little bit fitted. So you could like wear it out of the house, totally fine. I wanted to get some boots that I could wear in the snow, but that weren't like snow boots. You know what I mean? Multiple seasons kind of boots. And my friend had these, but in brown. And I swear I, I thought I tried these earlier, like last year. When I tried hers on, they were way lighter than the docks that I had that were fur lined. So I don't know if I got a different model before or what, but these ones felt light enough to like walk a long ways in. I wish they made them a little bit taller because I do feel like when you're short and you wear short boots like this, it almost makes your legs look shorter. But my plan is to wear scrunchy black socks to make them look like longer basically. These are gonna take some breaking in because Docs always do. They're like very stiff at the beginning. Oh, these actually fit perfect. I need to wear these today because there's snow. Nice, perfect. Okay, it's the next day. Clearly um, my hair is the same. Let me explain and put my phone on silent. Shit is going down with the thing that I was talking about earlier. Like it's just getting more in depth. Okay. Anyways, back to the hair. So yesterday, and there was a bit of a mix up with the scheduling because I booked the appointment online. Basically there was a scheduling like miscommunication, mostly my bad. I should have just called them after to like make sure. So she didn't have time to do like the full thing, but it actually was good because, well, I got a haircut. She didn't do anything to the color besides just did my roots so that the grays aren't coming through anymore. I did get a haircut, which I'm kind of regretting. <laughs> Whenever I try to do layers in my hair, it just makes it look like so much more thin and I wanted, I wanted layers, I asked for that, but now I'm regretting it, whatever, my hair grows fast. I do feel like it's looking like thinner than I'm used to. It was good because she did a test strand, so she actually like cut out some of my hair, bleached it to see like the integrity of the hair and how light it would get to make sure that we could do the whole thing without like damaging my hair. So the, the test strand turned out really good. It lightened enough and she said it was still in like really good shape. My hair is very healthy right now, she said. So it should be in, you know, good position position to do the whole thing and that's going to be happening the middle of january right now when i'm starting this vlog it's the beginning of january so the hair makeover the big hair makeover will probably be in the next vlog <laughs> she cut off a couple inches from the bottom and then the bangs she also made like much shorter than they were i need to get collagen powder back in my life though because i swear if you need to make your hair grow for me collagen powder whoa, I need to get groceries because yesterday I ate really unhealthy because I don't have enough. I don't have anything to cook here, like legit cook. I wanna make this soup that my friend made that was incredible. I think I'm gonna go to Trader Joe's. Also need to pick up my prescription from the pharmacy. Let me know, do any of you have a good online pharmacy that you use for like delivery? Because I know there's a, a bunch of different ones. I don't really wanna go through Amazon. I feel like that's a lot of data. <laughs> For Amazon. I mean, I guess the other companies could be doing the same thing and selling your data, but I like the bangs when it's up in a ponytail. If you need a good winter jacket, I friggin' love this thing. I've had this for a couple years now. It's warm enough in snow. I had it in Boston winter. The top part is like fleece lined up here. I think it came in the petite size. I think I have, I'll put my size down. I think it was the small petite, which I think is just like a little shorter. Again, it has side pockets. 
and these pockets, which are really nice because sometimes I just put my cards in there and don't even bring my wallet or anything. I have a huge Trader Joe's haul because I am here for a while, so I just want to stock up. This sausage, so good, especially with this combo is incredible. You could put it like on a bed of spinach or with pasta or whatever. A few turmeric and ginger shots, an onion. I went to one other store because I had to get some seasoning for the soup I wanna make. This actually isn't what my friend uses. She uses Dano seasoning, I couldn't find it. So I just got dash, some white vinegar for the salmon recipe I like to do, bone broth for the soup, but this is the chicken flavored bone broth, but I actually got more broth at Trader Joe's because I went there after. This is for salmon. I'm pretty sure this is the not good sourdough from Trader Joe's. One of them doesn't taste very sourdoughy, and I think it's this one. Raspberries, sriracha. This I'm really curious about because it's the same chili that that sauce is like made from, but this is tomato dumpling soup. Sounded really good. Two salads for lunches. Okay, this holiday hash is what she uses in the soup. It's based, I mean, you could just cut it up, but it just saves a lot of time and you can just dump it in. So I got one to freeze and one to use in case they stop selling it because of the seasons. Carrots, soup dumplings, which I actually just put in the microwave because I'm starving. The second one, Japanese fried rice. If you haven't tried this from Trader Joe's, gotta get the Japanese one, it's so good. Avocado oil spray to cook, extra firm tofu just to have with veggies. I got a few things of broth. I'm in a soup mood lately, so I just want to experiment. Another thing of beef bone broth. This kale, this is for the soup. Shishito peppers, I like just sauteing these with like garlic salt. Really good. Broccoli, salmon to make my favorite salmon recipe. Actually, over the holidays, I made another salmon recipe that was super good. So maybe I'll make that in a vlog too. Coconut aminos, basically like a soy sauce alternative. A couple of things of chomps. I usually get chomps on Thrive Market because they're way cheaper, but I just wanted to have a couple to have on hand. This is the best Trader Joe's pizza, I think. 10 minute farro, farro, I always forget how to say it. Thanks, farro. Crushed garlic, just like frozen to make it easy. That's everything. I'm gonna eat starving and put this away. Here are the dumplings. If I wasn't super hangry and starving, I would put it, you can add some like bone broth or the chicken broth. Um, heat it up, cut in some like diced onions and vegetables, and then put these in the soup and make it like a dumpling soup. But this will do. I just added coconut aminos and sriracha. I decided to go to Walgreens. Here's the thing. Walgreens and CVS are expensive if you don't get things on sale. But when things are on sale, they can end up being like cheaper than Target and stuff a lot of the time. Toilet paper, not exciting. Rach and Riley are coming at the end of the month to visit me here, which is so fun and stay with me. I didn't send her her Christmas presents, so I'm gonna do some shopping for her, but they had all the Christmas bags and holiday bags on sale for like a dollar, normally like $5. Paper bags and wrapping paper, I feel like got so expensive this year. Then tissue paper was also on sale for I think $1.50. Gain flings on sale. I haven't tried this deodorant before, but I'm always down to try new ones. I like trying men's deodorant because I feel like it works better, but this one was also on clearance. Don't know if that means they're discontinuing it. And then very exciting, bleach just for laundry. I just need to bleach like the towels here because I got my hair stuff on it. Exciting Walgreens haul. <laughs> Okay, so a couple things. I overcooked the sausage a little bit. This is the first time I've made this, by the way. This is my friend Kristen's recipe. I overcooked the sausage, and I also think the sausage that you use is key because this one isn't very flavorful at all. I have to find the exact one Kristen uses. I added half an onion to the harvest, the whole box of the harvest thing from Trader Joe's. I added a few more carrots too. I feel like I could have cooked the kale for longer, so it's a little more wilted down, but then the sausage, and sweet potato for less time. And then also I think the Dano's is critical because Dash didn't do the same thing. Like hers tasted way better, but this is gonna last me tons of meals. Still really good. It's just not as good as when Krista made it. So yeah, sausage and Dano's I think are key. I'm wrapped in a blanket. I was finishing an audiobook as I was making that soup. 
So I thought I would recap and do kind of like my best and worst books that I read in 2023. I'm not going to go through every single one because we'll be here for an hour, but I just want to highlight the best and worst. This is not a 2023 one, but I just want to talk about the one I just listened to the audiobook of or read. Saving Noah by Lucinda Berry. This was, whoa, heartbreaking. It was a good book. Like I, I actually really enjoyed this, but it is heavy. Look at the trigger warnings because there's a lot in this book. I did not see the ending coming at all. And I did like this because I feel like it's not a take that you hear very often. So let's go back 2023. So I read 37 books in 2023. I honestly was gonna be hitting 50. Like I would have hit 50 if it wasn't for <laughs> Akatar. I read two books in the Akatar Court of Thorns and Roses series. They, those books take me so long to get through. I think each one legitimately took me like a month. I think because there's so many different characters and things going on in those, in that series, I need to just read them one after the next. So I'm not starting book three because when I do that, I kind of want to just finish the entire series. So it's like fresh in my mind because even now I would need to like reread the ending of book two. I do enjoy A Court of Thorns and Roses the as a series, but I'm not dying over it yet in the same way that I do with Fourth Wing. I love Fourth Wing. That was definitely a top for the year for me. One thing that I didn't see coming <laughs> for this year is that I got into fantasy for the first time. I think if you are not a fantasy person, you're not in, you think you're not into it, give Fourth Wing a go. It has some spice. It has dragons. But to me, it's more of almost like Hunger Games kind of vibe. If I started with book one of Avatar, I would have probably never picked up another fantasy book ever again. I think if you're new to the genre, start with Fourth Wing. It'll get you hooked and it'll get you probably interested in reading more. So that was definitely a top book of the year for me. And also Iron Flame I finished at the end of the year when it came out. I feel like it's getting mixed reviews. I personally really liked Iron Flame, but I will say it took about 40% in to where things really started getting good. Whereas with Fourth Wing, I was hooked right away. Iron Flame took longer, but I still loved reading every page of it. And Fourth Wing for me was one of those books where I did not want it to end. Another top one, Divine Rivals, another fantasy series. Well, it's like, I mean, okay, yeah, I guess it's fantasy, but it's not as fantasy as like Fourth Wing, not, not even close to <laughs> Akatar. Like when there was the giant worm thing happening in Akatar, I was like, this might be where I cap out. <laughs> But Divine Rivals, I read literally like the last week, like the week of Christmas in North Carolina. I started it and then right now I'm on the second book, which just recently came out, which is Ruthless Vows. So far, I think Ruthless Vows is better than Divine Rivals. As a series, I'm intrigued. I like it. I like the characters. I think it's a good amount of like magic and fantasy. I only read a couple thrillers. I'm not big into thrillers, but I did really like Lisa Jewell, None of This Is True. It's a psychological thriller. I read it in two days. It had me hooked from the very beginning. I kind of like when they leave it open-ended a little bit. For example, Alice Feeney, His and Hers. It just like, in order to tie up everything, I liked the book but I found it a little unbelievable, the ending, just to like tie everything together like that. So I almost liked that none of this is true was more open-ended. A book I think literally every person should read that I've talked about so much is 4,000 Weeks, Time Management for Mortals. It has nothing to do with time management. I mean, it does in like a weird way, but more just like embracing the finitude of life. This was a top one for me. I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This was one of the more, I feel like, honest books I've read. Trigger warning for eating disorders and probably other things as well, but I listened to the audiobook actually of this one, and I think if you're gonna read this, listen to the audiobook because it's her, it's her voice. A five out of five for me was the happiest man on earth. This is the story of an Auschwitz survivor, Eddie. He actually just like recently passed away in 2021. It was incredible. I was engaged the whole time. I also listened to the audiobook of this one. It's a quick read, but I think it's really important. And again, it's not just like about Auschwitz or the Holocaust. It's more about like life lessons that he learned surviving it. This was great. Maybe you should talk to someone by Lori Got Gottlieb. I don't know. She's a therapist in real life, so it's a memoir. And she talks about both ends of both being a therapist and then being on the receiving end 
of therapy. It's super well written, which I really appreciated. <laughs> super well written, very interesting, and it gets better as you're continuing on. Five out of five for me on this one, which I rarely, rarely rate books five out of five. So the last two were both five out of fives. You can check my book highlights, by the way, of books part one and part two over on Instagram. I kind of stopped rating them because it was getting a little confusing. Now I just do like two thumbs up, thumbs up, down kind of thing. This one was, I rated 4.7 Tuesdays with Maury. It's nonfiction. It's about a professor who's dying of ALS, reconnects with an old favorite student of his who uh, he just shares his like stories and life lessons with. It was very sweet. Okay, I feel like especially with fiction, like romance, a lot of them just feel so cheesy to me. Like I enjoy reading them. I do like that category, but a lot of them just feel like, come on. This is still, I feel like my top book in like the romance category. Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. Every Summer After was inspired by Love in Other Words. I've, I've read both. I thought Love in Other Words was so good. I'm so glad I read it first. Every page of this is well written. It is enjoyable. It's like a feel good book. It's not too cheesy. And I wrote here on my little thing, if you liked Beach Read by Emily Henry, you would probably like this one. I rated this one 4.9. Another top is The Psychology of Money, five hour audiobook. It talks about our blind spots, biases, how we make sense of how the world works, recession, entering wars the illusion of predictability at risk. If you're interested at all in psychology or finance, I thought it was interesting. One last one, I rated 4.9 out of five, Brene Brown, Gifts of Imperfection. I've read, I wanna say like four or so Brene Brown. This was my favorite. This is one that I'm gonna continue to reread. I think this is another book that everyone should read. My least favorite, I'm just gonna call out a few. These are just my opinions. These are my least favorite, not for me. I think my least least favorite, oh, yeah, this one. The Nine Lives of Rose Napolitano. Oh my God. I'm just gonna read what I wrote. I said, loved the concept of this. It's about nine different lives of a woman who doesn't want kids and how that plays out, butterfly effect kind of thing. This fell so short and the ending was so disappointing. Pissed me off, honestly. <laughs> also very repetitive because each life step, oh yes, it's coming back. Each life, so that she goes through the nine lives, each life stems from the same exact scenario like the same single argument with her husband so it just gets so freaking repetitive read the goodreads reviews if you want the gist of it like skip the book i feel bad putting this in this category because i love colleen hoover this is a colleen hoover and taryn fisher co-wrote this together i thought it was so boring i thought the ending was horrible there's a lot of great colleen hoover and actually at the end of the year i read a lot of Colleen Hoover. I'm gonna update in a second the last five books that I read the last week of <laughs> Christmas because it was like literally all I was doing. It was lovely. I was confused by this one because I've heard a lot of people like this one, but just goes to show, you know, we all have different opinions, but it's basically about a reporter who falls for a celebrity and then they reconnect 10 years later. Like, I was curious enough about the story to finish it, but it was just like very, very blah to me. Nothing, like the plot was just not not interesting enough and it was also like very predictable another one that has real mixed <laughs> reviews green lights by matthew mcconaughey i don't know if it's just because i listened to the audiobook i hated every second of this he sounded so egotistical to me to a point where i was just like cringing listening to this i'm trying to remember that thing that he always says there's like a it's like some weird sound effect i feel like there were so many pointless stories in here i don't know if he truly had an editor for this book. To me, that's what it felt like, was that like he just spewed some shit and spewed some stories and no one actually edited it. So those were, I feel like the standouts, I hope I'm not missing a thing, of 2023. I already talked about a couple actually. So I read five books like that last week or so of, of the year. I read His and Hers, Alice Feeney, which I touched on. I read Divine Rivals, Heartbones by Colleen Hoover, Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. First, let's talk about those. I feel like Ugly Love had a ton of reviews when I looked it up. I liked it, but it's not one of my favorite Colleen Hoover's actually. I think my, my main issue with it is that it felt a little predictable and also like not enough was happening. There was a lot of spice, but for the majority of the book, like I literally feel like it was probably two thirds of the book. Not one of my favorites. Heartbones I liked better. Heartbones I thought was really cute. At first when I posted this on Instagram, I said it wasn't dark. I guess it is a little bit dark. <laughs> 
It still felt like a feel-good book to me and I, I really liked the story of this one. I liked the ending and it happened one summer. Oh my god, this book. This is Tessa Bailey. This is another book that I felt like I'd heard a lot about. My first issue with this book was that I have a hard time when authors make the main character too unlikable right out the get-go. Like that happened to me with one Emily Henry book. I can't remember which one. Was it People We Meet on Vacation? I think it was. The one with like the orange cover. I have a hard time caring about a character and like rooting for them when an author makes them too unlikable at the beginning and that's how i felt about it happened one summer like the main girl character i just was not into at all was into the guy and it, it was fun because it takes place in the pacific northwest on the oregon coast was very into the guy very into the guy but it was very cheesy and also very graphic like whoa the spice level on this one it was like i would say four out of five four point five out of five like i was not reading this on the plane and I was in the middle seat and I literally had to close my Kindle, but not in a way that I was into. So yeah, I did not love that one. So I'm gonna leave, I'll leave the standout books I talked about linked down below. I'm tired. I'm gonna start editing this vlog that you're watching right now, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a very like chill vlog. Hope you enjoyed regardless. And again, you can get 40% off your order on Ritual with the code TaylorW40. I'll have the link down below. And that's for their limited time New Year's sale. So I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.